Hello, Abnormal Family. Uh, a little bit hoarse tonight. I guess I talked a little too much during the live. Got a little excited, I guess. Uh, I want to uh, share another encounter with you, but first I wanted to talk to you all about uh, what's coming up. We're going to be going to that island as soon as we can, and um, like I discussed with everybody, if there's a lot of uh, writings and stuff out there, uh, symbolisms and things like that. We won't be able to post it on YouTube or Facebook, so it will be in the Patreon. Uh, it's usually in the description of each video, and no, it's not inexpensive. We've done the very minimum on it, just so y'all can get the content. But if I post a lot of that on my Facebook and YouTube, I get strikes against me, and um, I sure don't want to do that right now. But uh have another encounter for you guys I think you're really going to enjoy. And I want to thank each and every one of you for showing up tonight on the live. Uh, it was really awesome. But Friday night is going to be another good live at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. So we look forward to seeing you all there. Come on down, hang out with us, and let's have a good time. Uh, in one of the early months of 2009, a man reported seeing a dogman near Fergus Falls in Otter Tail County. Here is how he described the encounter. I'll start off by saying that I have never believed in any of these sort of creatures. But I saw something in early 2009 that really disturbed me and is making me change my mind. I was not under the influence of any drugs, and I have better than average eyesight. And the lightning was nearest sunset. Oh, sorry, the lighting was nearing sunset. But I was still able to see clearly. So I'll get this underway and explain my story, and maybe someone can shed some light on this for me. I live in Fergus Falls, Minnesota, which is in the west central Minnesota, about an hour drive from Fargo, North Dakota. My mother-in-law lives out in the country, about three quarters of a mile out of Fergus Falls, and I was staying there while my wife and her mother went shopping in town. They called me and asked me if I wanted to go to a 7 p.m. movie, so I left the house at about 6.30 p.m., 6.45 to meet them at the theater. About two miles from the house on a country road known as the Wendell Road along the Mastinka River, I saw three white-tailed deer. Two of those deer were rather small, probably just yearlings and a large doe, who I assumed was their mother. Me, being an avid hunter, lover of wildlife, and future wildlife biologist, stopped to look at the deer. I should also mention that I hunt in the area and have spent my whole life in the Fergus Falls area. The deer were following a small creek bed, which is in fact the Mastinka River, so there were hardly any trees except for one. Maybe I didn't see it there because of the tree, but I just noticed something crouching behind the tree on my side of the road, looking at the deer, and to my disbelief, hunting them. It just sat there, looking at the deer, taking no notice of me, even though I was in my truck. No more than 40 yards away, with a clear view, with nothing obstructing my view of it, I had one hand on the tree that was bracing itself with. What struck me as shocking was the fact that it seemed to be two-legged creature. And not four-legged. Its hands appeared to have opposable thumbs and were rather slender and long, very unlike a wolf. The creature looked as though if it stood upright. It would be over seven feet tall with a protruding muzzle, broad shoulders, a slender waist, thick muscular thighs, and being as there was no snow on the ground, I couldn't see the feet. Sorry, he said there was snow on the ground. He was deep, dark brown in color throughout the body. After several seconds of looking at the creature in the shock, the deer ran off. Then something amazing happened. It looked right at me. As though blaming me for losing his meal, he just sat there looking at me and blinking but not moving. This scared the crap out of me. So I hit the gas pedal and drove off. It was very dark after the movie, so I didn't much feel like trudging through the three and a half feet of snow with the possibility of a monster lurking in the area who is currently looking for a meal that I scared off. So at about 10 a.m. I went back there and I walked down to a tree. Under the tree there was no snow, so there were no tracks that I could see, but leading up to the tree there were three tracks leading in from my grandmother field, which was hard black dirt, and if you know what Minnesota field looks like in late winter, early spring, you can't make anything out of the dirt, 
The tracks I did find were only about 6 to 7 inches in length, but were clearly canine prints, with the exception of four toe-looking marks in the snow. Now that this encounter has happened, well, my grandmother-in-law is now having things around her house, scratching on her house, wiggling her doorknobs, pecking on her windows, and heavy breathing at her bedroom window at night when she goes to bed. Her dogs seem to want to go to bed way before she does now, and when they do go to bed, being little rat terriers, they dive in the bed and run under the covers. Whatever's around, they know it's not nice, because they're afraid. She said they lay in bed at night, listen to the bangs and bumps around, sometimes on the roof, sometimes beating on the house, sometimes just little knocks or scratches, and little light squeaks on the window, like fingernails running down the glass. They endure this every night. So far, nothing has tried to actually come in, and we're hoping that it will go back to the woods in which it came from. Do you guys believe it's because i seen it? Do you believe it followed me back because it seen me? Or do you believe it's always been in the area and now it's mad because I ran off its meal? If anyone out there can help me, please leave a comment as I'll be checking to see what you all say. Thank you very much, Abnormal Family, for allowing me to share my story. Guys, this was a very good one. I think possibly it followed him back because it's seen him. It may be mad at him, but I think a lot of times it's based more on they see you and they get curious of you and they end up following you back out of curiosity and now that it's found people there. It's curious, and I think it's uh, it may be there for a while. Um, I know sometimes they leave, sometimes they don't. But um, I think put some lights up around your house, some game cameras, and uh, hopefully that will keep them at least at bay and kind of set them like you would a fence with a perimeter and use those to keep them back. That works a lot of times. I want to thank everybody for watching this video, and if you don't mind, hit the like button. It helps a whole lot doesn't take long, but it sure helps push the videos, and we appreciate that very much. We look forward to seeing you all Friday night at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. And like we always say, keep your head on a swivel, don't be something's dinner, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.